G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this video in the Free Math Worksheet series. This week the topic is metric measures of length. The worksheets themselves, if you see, uh, they will have questions about converting meters to centimeters and back, uh, kilometers to meters, and centimeters to millimeters. So there are obviously a lot more uh, metric units that we'll look at in uh, future episodes, but these are the ones we're looking at today. The first comment I must make um, is that the metric system is not yet used in the entire world. I say not yet because I believe that's the way we're going. Basically all the other countries of the world have moved in that direction apart from the United States and a couple of other minor countries. So I'm expecting that at some time in the future the whole world will be metric. And in the United States I'm uh, I've done a little bit of research and a bit of reading and so it's clear that in the American education system they are moving towards the metric system as well. I gather you probably teach both sets of units in the United States um, but metric units are an important part of what you teach. So the other thing to say is that there is a difference in the spelling and that's reflected on the worksheets themselves. Um, so on the worksheets to avoid offending anybody because I know what it's like when you read a word that is spelled differently from the way you know is correct. It can be a bit of, uh, a, it can be difficult to deal with and I don't want to offend anybody in the audience for this video. So um, I've used both spellings on the worksheet so you pick the one you like basically. This is the original spelling of the word metre. It's a French word, mitre, maître like the word center in a lot of the English speaking part of the world we spell it C-E-N-T-R-E. -E. The Americans very sensibly anglicized the spelling or made it more English if you like um, by changing the R-E so it says me ter with the E-R saying er. Okay that's the way it is um, and similarly with the meter the units that are derived from the meter the centimeter kilometer and so on. All right enough of that. Let's look at the units we're going to be converting and there are three pairs as I just mentioned. Centimetres to metres, kilometres to metres, centimetres to millimetres and in the opposite direction. So if you look through the worksheets you'll see I go in both directions on the worksheets. The conversion that the students are doing is based around the, a conversion factor between the two units. So to know how we need to change the numbers, we need to understand how big the relative units are. And the metric system makes that really nice and easy for us. And I'll explain what I mean. So the centimeter has a prefix which is spelled the same everywhere, centi in front of the word meter. The kilometer similarly has kilo and the millimeter has the prefix milli. And those prefixes have very precise mathematical meanings. So centi means a hundredth, kilo means a thousand, and milli means a thousandth. So unlike the old-fashioned British units where 12 inches equals a foot and then three, three feet equal a yard and 1,200 and I've forgotten however many there were, <laughs> um, 5,280 feet in a mile and so on. All those different numbers had to be remembered. They, they sort of grew during history I think and so they had different numbers of units making up other ones. In the metric system because it was planned in advance it's all based on 10. So a centi anything is a hundredth of something. So a centilitre is a hundredth of a litre. A kilo of anything is a thousand. So a kilowatt is a thousand watts and so on. So we use those numbers when we're doing the conversion. So basically when we're converting, and I'm going to just add a little bit more to this messy set of notes, if we're converting a number like 150 centimeters to meters, we're still going to have the 1 and the 5 and we could even have the 0 as well. They're just going to be in different places because this is a power of 10 and so our all the prefixes in the metric system refer to powers of 10. So centimetres to metres, the conversion factor here of course is divided by 100 because these are hundredths of a metre, 150 hundredths 
is how much, and this will be 1.5. Let me uh, make up a couple of questions here. Let's say we had 2.6 kilometres. How many metres would that be? The conversion factor this time is a thousand times or times a thousand. 2.6 times a thousand will be 2,600. And the last one of these quick examples, let's say we had, um, oh, let's have a nice easy one, nine centimetres. Centimetres to millimetres. Now there isn't a nice, the prefix itself doesn't tell us. We have to look at the difference between the prefixes. So if this is a hundredth and this is a thousandth, the difference of course is 10. So we multiply centimetres by 10 to give us millimetres and that's 90. So each of the conversions, as I said, is based on this idea of powers of 10. So we're going to reuse the digits in the same order, the same relative positions to each other. They'll just be in a new place. Let me talk a little bit more about that. And what I'm going to say now may be to some people a little controversial, but I'm going to say it anyway, because basically I'm right. Let's go back to our question before of 150 centimetres and we're going to convert this and I just had the answer before 1.5 with or without the zero. Now students may want to put the zero but they don't need to, it's an unnecessary zero. Either way it may or may not have a zero. And as I said before here of course we're dividing by 100. None of that's controversial. The controversial bit is where students learn to move the decimal point let me urge you not to teach that to your students. Now, as I said, it's a bit controversial. I may have just offended half my audience. I'm sorry if I've done that. I don't intend to offend anybody, but it's simply a really, really bad idea. My experience of teaching young adults who are going on to be teachers who have learned to move the decimal point is that when they do activities just like this with metric units, having grown up with metric units in the Australian schooling system, they get their answers wrong over and over and over again because they can't remember how many decimal places and they don't remember which way to move them left or right. So some people literally get an answer that is 10,000 times too big or too small because they move it the wrong way, two places, and they get a you know, completely ridiculous answer because they're not thinking about the process, the quantity, the operation and so on. Rather than that, let me strongly suggest that you teach your students to move the digits. If we're dividing by 100, every digit is going to move to the right two places. So we'll move the digits, not the decimal point. We're allowed to move the digits because digits can go anywhere because of the place value system. The decimal point never moves. It's always between the ones and the tenths place. All right, so if we move the digits two places, where's the decimal point at the moment? Well, clearly it doesn't have one because we haven't written it, but that's a whole number, so the decimal must be just after the zero. And if we move everything this way two places, the one will end up right there. The five will be just after the decimal. Of course, as I said, the zero, we can actually drop the zero because it's after the decimal point. Okay. The other way that I would help reinforce this idea of thinking about the quantity and what's our answer going to be, you know, what sort, what you really want is what, what place is the digit going to end up in? What is it roughly equal to? I would ask a question like this, how many, I'm writing this very quickly, how many hundreds are there or where are the hundreds. Simply because this is a conversion factor of 100, we're dividing by 100, I'd say how many hundreds are there? Look at this number and tell me the hundreds. I could write a little label here. That's the hundreds. Well if there's 100 to divide by 100, everybody knows that will be 1 and so it ends up there. So if you use questions like that and if you teach your students to move the digits to the right place, I believe it'll be a lot clearer to them and ultimately when they're older and they've used this over and over again, it will be familiar to them and they're thinking about the size of the quantity and where it ends up. So I'm not going to redo this of course with kilometres and metres but the conversion factor is a thousand and so it's three places so depending on which conversion it is from kilometres to metres you're going to move all the digits to the left three places it will get bigger 
because the number of meters is bigger by three places and so on. Um, the other recommendation I'd make to go along with this is that you make up uh, what I call place value slides where you have a, a sliding piece of paper that you, or cardboard or something that you can move left and right with digits written on it and have something else in front of it showing the, the places and the decimal point and then move the digits and I think that will make it far, far clear. Oh, by the way, we're actually working on a piece of software that will help with that as well. So um, if you keep in touch with me, um, I'll let you know when that's available. I'll probably talk too long on this one. Thank you for being with me. I appreciate your uh, support with the free math worksheets. I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to talking to you next time.